Well, we're in for a treat this weekend. It's Memorial Day weekend, and we are kicking off summer at the Life Church, and brand new series all summer long, and Pastor Travis Moody's up tonight. Come on, give it up for Pastor Travis. Come on, Travis. All right, man. <laughs> all right. How you doing, church? It's my pleasure to, to kick off the summer. And the, the title of my message is, God is my shepherd. So we're going to jump right into it. I get a lot of questions as pastor here. I'm the life, life group pastor, and, uh, and I get a lot of questions like, you know, should I, should I buy this house? Should I marry this person? Should I leave this person? Should I quit my job? All of these questions about, you know, life-changing questions. So I thought I would really share a message to answer this question. And the scripture that I'm going to come from is a very familiar scripture. Many of us have already memorized it. We've heard it a lot of times. It's one of the most popular scriptures in the, in the Bible. But it comes from Psalms 23. So the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right path for his name's sake. Psalms 23, 1 through 3. Now, even though many of us have this scripture already memorized, a lot of times it's harder for us to apply it to our lives. And so today, what I want to do is to help you apply in, a, in practical ways. God wants to, this scripture lets us know that God wants to have an intimate relationship with us. I mean, he has, he wants to be a part of everything that we do. He wants us to totally be, totally trusting him and dependent on him for every area of our lives. As we're faced with these major decisions in life, God wants to be the one who helps us. He wants to guide us. The scripture, the words we see in this scripture are, he wants to, he wants to lead us. He wants to guide us. He wants to protect us. God is the shepherd and we're the sheep. Another way of saying it is God is the coach, and we're the players. God wants to coach us through life. So as we're facing all of these tough questions, and God wants to make sure we get it right. But there's also an enemy that wants to, to distract us to make sure we get it wrong. And so how do you know? How do you know what to do? How do you know what God wants us to do? So that's what I want to talk about. It's important to get these things right. Uh, the wrong decision could drastically impact our lives for years to come. We got to get it right. So I want to share with you uh, four tests because we hear the word, we hear God's voice, but we also hear the enemy's voice. So we got to know the difference. So I want to give you four tests so that you can practically uh, assess whether you're hearing God's direction or not. So in the message, I want to give you four tests and four truths. Each of, these each of these tests reveal a distinct truth about God. And I thought the best way to illustrate this for you is to share a personal story, a personal decision. The, one of the biggest and best decisions of my life, the decision to, to marry Carol Michelle Wheeler. So you, you want to hear about that? So I'm going to share this story. And in, in, in this story, it really, you can see those four distinct tests that we went through and the four truths. So I have to warn you, though, the story's a little long, so you're going to have to stay with me. And also, Carol may or may not have a different version of this story. <laughs> but tonight, today I have the, 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 the stage, so we're going to go with my version. Y'all okay with that? <laughs> All right, so let me give you a little background. Carol and I met in the first grade at Alsea Elementary. First grade. Yeah, I tell her I knew her before she knew herself. <laughs> so we got a picture of us in Miss Harold's class in the first grade. Y'all see that? Can you pick out which one is me? And Carol? All right, highlight, the, the, the next picture highlights which one is me. Y'all see me at the bottom? Yeah, I know. So cute, right? So cute. <laughs> so we met in the first grade. Uh, we, were, we were bused to the same uh, junior high school, Wooddale Junior High School. And in eighth grade, I, I finally got up the nerve to ask her to be my woman. Yeah, you know, back then, we would have, uh, 
See, our catchphrase was like, will you give me a chance? That was, a, that was how you asked somebody to. And so, you know, I, I, I sent her a note, will you give me a chance? Yes box, no box. So I see her writing. I was like, oh, man, this, oh, man, this is great. I get the note back, and I, I saw those words that every man wants to hear. I just want to be friends. <laughs> oh. So we became friends in middle, junior high school, high school. I actually got a picture of, uh, of us in the ninth grade uh, banquet. Look at that. I know, I know. Big pimping, wasn't it? Big pimping, yeah. Ninth grade banquet. Hey, but here's the thing. So Carol, uh, we were just friends. And Carol was the prettiest girl in ninth grade. So every boy in school had a picture just like this of her. <laughs> but that's okay. I got one of them. Okay, I got one of them. So we, became, we were friends through high school, college. I, she went to University of Tennessee. I went to Georgia Tech. And uh, my freshman year, I visited her at University of Tennessee. And I actually met a, a girl that went to high school with her. And uh, this girl went to school in Atlanta as well. And I started dating this girl that went to high school with her. Got, and not just dated, I got engaged to her. Yes, dated her all through college, got engaged. And our plan was, after graduation, she graduated a year before me. And after gradu I graduated, we were supposed to get married. Well, closer we got to graduation, she was just hesitant to set a date. So graduation, night before my graduation, I, I had a conversation with her, and I said, listen, are we going to do this or not? And she said, well, I don't know why we're in such a hurry. I took it as a night. But, you know, I graduated the next day, and uh, we had a, a real tragedy in our family. Uh, while we were at my graduation, my, my brother committed suicide. So real tragic for our family. We uh, left graduation in Atlanta, came back to Memphis, dealing with the issue. And, and Carol was just being a, a friend like she had always been. She was just supporting me during this, during this time. And uh, I had accepted a job in South Carolina uh, to, to, to begin a job. And she was helping me to pick out furniture and get things ready for that. And, and, uh, and so I asked, you know, she was dating, had been dating this guy. So I asked, hey, what happened to this guy? You're still dating him. And she said, no, no, we, we broke up. I said, oh, man, I thought you guys were going to get married. <laughs> yeah. She said, no. She said, no, we're, we, we're not getting married. She said, why do you want to marry me? <laughs> I know. I'm thinking she's just joking, right? I'm thinking she's joking because we had never dated, never kissed, never, you know, had any, any we were just friends. But I found out doing this, I was home for about two weeks, and I found out during this time, she wasn't, she wasn't joking. She was helping me pick out furniture. What I didn't know, she was picking out her furniture. <laughs> she somehow convinced me that I needed to have a pink couch. She called it mom, but I was like, that's a pink couch. Oh, all oh, the girls are going to love it. She's talking about her girls. <laughs> so over this two weeks, you know, I found out that she was serious. We, uh, this was September, graduation was September. We ended up getting married six months later. We've been married 27 years. Yeah. Now, ladies, I don't suggest you take this path. Let me tell you now, that is not the type, the, the message. I don't think that's the right thing to do is to go and propose to the guys, okay? But I want to I wanna share with you, because this was a big decision. And we got it right. It was, a, it was a best, one of the best decisions of my life. But how did we get it right? We went through these four tests. And I think these, we're talk, I'm talking about my, my decision to get married, but I think you could apply this test to any major decision. Decision to buy a house, a decision to quit a job, a decision to buy a business. Any major decision in your life, you can use these same four tests. So you ready? So the first test. And I've called these the four tests to know and follow God's lead. The first test is this, the Bible test. The first test is the Bible test. The Bible is the inspired, inerrant, authoritative word of God. It is God's word. Numbers 23, 19 says, God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent or change his mind. Has he said... And will he not do? 
or has he spoken and will he not make it good? When God leads us, when God is directing us, it has to align with the Bible. There was a guy who came to me for counseling, and he said that uh, he felt God was leading him to leave his wife and to be with another woman. I told him that's not possible. See, you don't have to pray. I don't have to pray about this. You don't have to have a whole conversation. God cannot lead you against the Bible. That's his word. He is never going to go against that. If God says it, it has to be true. He, he can't, he, if he says it, it changes to make it true. God is, is not a, a, a liar. So here's the truth with the, the first test. The truth is God would never lead us in a way that contradicts his word. This is the first test because if it doesn't pass this test, if you feel led to do something and it doesn't pass this test, then you can stop here. It's not God. So my desire to marry Carol, you know, it fit with the Bible. God talks about marriage, so it, it fits. So I went to the next test, which is the test of time. The second test is the test of time. The Bible says there's a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. See, God gives us desires, but he also gives it to us in his timing. And the one thing I've learned about God is God is not going to give you a desire one minute and then he changes his mind and, and, and takes it away. In fact, when God gives you a desire, when he's leading you, when you're not following it, the desire gets stronger and stronger the longer you go. The more time goes, the stronger the desire gets. God doesn't change his mind. See, the enemy is always trying to trap you into to a time. He's always trying to either get you to make a quick decision before you had a chance to consult God, or he's wanting you to make the right decision at the wrong time. He's trying to trick you. And a good way to, to, to combat that is the, is the time test. Just let some time pass between you and your desire. If, if some time passes and you still have that uh, desire, then maybe it is from God. So I told you I met Carolyn in the first grade. Asked her to be my woman in the eighth grade. So when this, when, when this, this uh, question came up after graduation, you know, my initial reaction was, no, you can't have all of this in eighth grade. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. <laughs> but here's the thing. In the eighth grade, I wasn't ready. In the eighth grade was not God's timing. I would have messed it up. That was not the right timing. And I, and I tell Carol, I said, well, what happened? What made the right timing? I think the fact that I became employable. I got a job. I think she was waiting to see, well, I don't know how you're going to turn out. I don't know. Let me see. Let me see, you know. So note to guys, a job always makes you look better. I'm telling you, get you a job. <laughs> became employable. But it was, you know, time had passed. You know, I was like, you guys remember that, that movie, that uh, TV show, uh, Family Matters, with Steve Urkel? See, I was like Steve Urkel. So I'm wearing you down, Laura. I'm wearing you down. That's, that's what I was doing. I was just wearing her down over time. <laughs> Some time had passed. Here's God's truth. God's timing is perfect. So if we pass the Bible test and we pass the test of time, we can go to the third test, which is the door test. Revelation 3, 7 says this, the door that God opens, no man can shut. And the door he shuts, no man can open. See, this is good news. It takes the pressure off of us. See, some of us are trying to knock doors open or shut doors. But and God, that's God's responsibility. God is the one who's going to open up the door and close the, the wrong door. We got to allow God to open and close. When, we, when I was engaged to the other girl and she was hesitant to set a date, I mean, I was frustrated. I'm, 
you know, I'm like, well, what's, we, we kept ha having conversation. And I'm kept, we, we kept having arguments about it. And, and, uh, and I'm frustrated. Now I'm, I'm praying to God, well, God, change your mind, give her the heart. And at some point, I, I awaken, and I realize, God, pr I'm praying that, God, let your will be done. If this is for me, you let it happen. But if it's not, shut the door. We have to let God shut the door. And it had nothing to do, it had nothing to do with the other girl. She was a nice girl. She was a Christian, nice looking, come from a great family. Nothing about her. The only issue was God never intended for us to get married. Nothing about her. In fact, I, mean, I told you her, uh, she and Carol went to the same high school. So I get to relive this decision every 10 years. <laughs> yes. The first one wasn't fun, wasn't fun. But uh, so this, her first 10-year reunion, we were at the, uh, you know, they, I didn't go to their high school. And uh, we were, our, our, oldest, our, our oldest daughter may have been two or three years old. And uh, she had to go to the restaurant. We were in a park. All of the families were there. And, and uh, the park was all, the bathroom was all, away, all the way across the park. And so I'm taking her to the bathroom. I see another dad taking her, his, his daughter to the bathroom. And, and we're walking and talking. And I didn't realize this was my ex fiance's husband. <laughs> I'm sitting here talking to him, and I think he knew who I was, but I had no idea. I'm just talking to him. And when I found out, this guy was a nice guy. I mean, he was a doctor. He was a good-looking guy. They had cute kids. And I, and I realized, not only was I blocking my blessing, I was blocking her blessing. See, sometimes we're trying to keep a door open. And what we're doing is we're blocking our blessing. I just feel that God has a word for somebody in here. You're trying to keep a door open that God is trying to shut. You're frustrated. You're trying to everything you can, all of your energy, trying to hold this door open. But God is saying, I'm trying to shut it. This is not your blessing. I don't know what it is, whether it's a relationship that you're in, whether it's a job that you're in, whether, but God is trying to shut a door. He's trying to open the right door. The, the enemy will always try to block it. He's trying to distract you from your destiny. So he's, he's telling you he's the author of lies. So he's telling you, no, no, this is the best you can do. He's telling you God doesn't want, God doesn't want you to, to have any fun. He's trying to tell you that you, just a small compromise. But you've got to follow the shepherd. You can't allow the enemy, you can't allow the voice of the enemy to keep you where God doesn't want you. God is the one. When the enemy attacks, you have to go back to the scripture and say, well, who's your shepherd? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I lack nothing. He's the one that's leading me. You got to go back to who's your shepherd. So here's the truth about God. Only God wants what's best for you. Only God knows what's best for you. And only God gives what's best for you. The enemy wants you to think that God doesn't have your best interest. God doesn't know what he's talking about. But I'm telling you the truth is only God wants what's best for you. Only God knows what's best for you. And only God gives what's best for you. So if you pass the Bible test, and you pass the test of time, and you pass the door test, the final test is the accountability test. So... Again, when, when I was faced with this question of Mary and Carol, I thought she was kidding. When I finally realized she wasn't kidding, I, I realized, okay, maybe I'm emotional. You know, maybe I, you know, I just lost my brother. You know, I, I've, been, I've, I've been rejected by this, this other girl, and I'm going off to a new place. So I'm thinking, I may not be thinking right. But in my mind, I could not think of a reason why not to marry her. I loved this girl all my life. I could, in my mind, I couldn't think of a reason why I shouldn't marry her. But I, was, I knew enough to think, maybe I'm not thinking right. And so I went to my, uh, my dad. I, I felt he was going to talk some sense into me. So I went to him, and all of us need somebody like that in our lives. We need somebody who we can go to who's not going to be attached to, who can talk some sense into us when we don't think we're, we're heading in the right direction. We need a person who's going to say, come on, man, that's not right. You're messing up. 
We need that. So for me, my dad was that person for me. So I went to my dad, uh, and again, they, had, they knew nothing about me, me breaking up with the other girl. It, it was only been about two weeks since my graduation, so they know nothing. And I didn't want to bother them. You know, we were going through a family issue. I didn't want to bother them, but I knew, okay, I, 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 need, to, I need to talk with them. So I sat them down, my mom and dad, and I said, Dad, I'm thinking about marrying Carol Wheeler. And my dad looked at me. He looked at my mom, looked back at me and said, we think that's a good idea. <laughs> Dad, did you hear the words that came out of my mouth? <laughs> Not the girl I've been dating for the last four years. <laughs> he said, yeah, we think that's a good idea. And later I realized, I said, well, Dad, if you think this is a good idea, why did you tell me before? <laughs> You've never said anything about the other girl. And he said, son, you, you, didn't, you didn't ask me. You told me, you got it, you proposed. She said yes, so I said, congrats. <laughs> you were going to let me make the biggest mistake of my life. But see, that's how some of us are. We didn't ask. See, God is just like that. If we don't ask, he gives us the free will to make the decision. He knows what's best. He knows it's the biggest mistake of your life. He knows what he has for you, and for you to get to where he wants you, he knows you need to make a different decision, but he's going to allow you to, to make the decision. See, the enemy doesn't want you to get advice. He doesn't want you to get wisdom. He wants you to make the decision in your, your own power. Proverbs 12, 15 says, the way of fools seem right to them, but the wise man listens to advice. God said, it is wise to get advice from other people. And see, we, when we get advice, we, we, don't, we, we don't need to go to the person and say, hey, God told me to move to Atlanta. What do you think? Because if, if a person has tell, told me that, I'm going to say, well, if God told you to do it, it must be right. See, that gives me no room to speak into your life. A better way to say it is, hey, I'm thinking, I'm thinking of moving to Atlanta. What do you think? I'm thinking this is the right person for me to marry. But what do you think? So you need to give other people the right to speak into your life. And it does no good if, 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 if you're not willing to listen. If people give you advice, you've got you to be willing to listen. I, I hear all the time people who came to me and say, well, man, I, I knew I shouldn't have bought that car. I knew I shouldn't have bought that house. I didn't come to you because I knew what you were going to say. That's a good indication. If you knew what I was going to say, <laughs> that's a good indication. That's not what God wants you to do. Right? You got to be willing to listen. My dad was willing to let me make that mistake. God is as well. He's willing to allow you to make the mistake, even though he knows what's best for you. Here's the truth. God confirms his direction through spiritual relationships. This is why we spend so much time talking about life groups. You know, life groups kick off this weekend. You can sign up for life groups. But this is the reason why we, want, we know that it's better for you to be in a relationship with other people. Real quickly, I want to give you three reasons why you need to be in a life group. If you haven't, if you haven't joined a group already, please go and join one because there are three reasons. The first one is this. You need encouragement. I mean, even as I prepared for this message, I, I felt a spirit of heaviness on me. And what I did was I, I, I texted my group. I called my group and said, man, I, here's what I'm feeling. And they all encouraged me. Man, you're going to do great. You're going to do awesome. Man, you're going you're to knock it out. I needed that. Sometimes we just need a hug. I'm just telling you, sometimes we just need people out loud saying, yeah, you got this. You need that. You need encouragement. The second reason is this. You need wisdom. Even this week, one of the guys in my group, his, uh, his wife had gotten a uh, couple of job offers, and they wanted some wisdom on which job to take. And I was able to, to kind of talk them through that decision. You need people that you can talk to. You need wisdom. The third thing that you need, you need protection. See, if, if you're the sheep and God is the shepherd, you ought to be able to look around you and feel that you're connected with some other sheep. 
You're the sheep. God is the shepherd. If you are not connected to other sheep, if you're not looking around, it's not, there's not some other people saying, bye, bye. <laughs> then you, you may not be following the shepherd. You may be isolated. You have to be connected with other people. <laughs> See, First Peter says this, your enemy, the enemy, your devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. See, the enemy doesn't, the lion doesn't jump into a pile of sheep. What he does is he waits to see which sheep strolls off by himself. And he gets between the sheep and the shepherd and the other sheep, and he gets them isolated. And that becomes easy prey. God wants you connected with other sheep. If you're not in the life group, please join a life group. Let me recap the test. The first test is what? The Bible test. Yeah, if it doesn't line up with the Word of God, it's not happening. The second test, the test of time. Let some time happen. The third test is the door test. Yes, God opens the door. He shuts the door. The fourth test, the accountability test. What do your spiritual relationships say about this? When we follow these tests, it gives us the confidence and the peace to know that we're headed in the right direction, that we're following the lead of the shepherd. You guys receive the word today? Yeah.